Welcome to a recorded webinar simply titled Birdseed Included Tools Capture the Attention of More Visitors Individually. Today's short webinar is going to be led by myself. My name is Drew Sheehan and I'm the founder of Birdseed. We start with this image right here. Uh, this kind of represents a ton of different tools that you can use to capture the attention of different visitors. Things such as a contact form, the ability to schedule meetings, uh, user feedback tools, knowledge library, live chat. And we kind of start with the challenge that even if you believe that all of these tools are needed for different types of website visitors, how do you kind of make them all fit together? And so as a starting point, we kind of want to explain the bird seed and the way that it works is we include a whole bunch of tools, which we're going to go into more detail on here in a moment. But the way that we present these is through what we call an engagement panel. And our engagement panel is triggered by what we call a launch button. Now you can also hide that launch button and you can trigger it through your own custom link or button. But either way, the whole point is that on any and every page that you want to make your engagement tools available, you can instantly launch them through your engagement panel. And so we put them all together in uh, kind of a row or a list. Um, and so you start with a couple of things to add this to your website and make it look native and on brand. So when you're building your custom engagement panel, right, in order to make it look uh, custom and unique to your organization, the first thing you'll do is pick your brand color. We start with and keep it simple with one dominant color so that you don't have to overwhelm and match a whole bunch of colors. We try and keep things simple. The next thing is, is you'll want to add a uh, custom logo, maybe add some text uh, at the top. You can add whatever you would like to uh, make it on brand. And then what you're going to actually include from Birdseed is only the tools that are specific to your organization. Now, we offer a total of 12 different tools, but I say this because we don't want to overwhelm someone to say, well, I, you know, setting up 12 tools and adding all those is so much, it can be overwhelming to my users. And we first start by saying that not everyone will use all 12 tools. You choose the ones that are particularly powerful and pertinent to your business. The next thing is, is that you're only going to show different tools based upon your availability, or at least you have the option to do so. And so what happens is, is you set your hours of operation, right? Your working hours, and you can then choose for each one of those tools to display it always outside of working hours or during working hours. So you're not going to show all of your active tools at one time. The next thing you can do is you can then group those tools. So for instance, if you have a number of contact tools, right? Number of ways to get in touch with you, you can first start by allowing someone to say, or to choose, here are my contact options. All that to say, what you're doing is, is you're not overwhelming the user as a starting point. And then the final thing is, is you can actually highlight specific tools or specific groups if you want to present that as something that uh, would be a value to stand out. If you're trying to, uh, let's say, um, highlight a webinar you have coming up, or maybe all of your contact options, things along those lines. All right, so we're now going to get into uh, the, per the real purpose of this webinar, and that is to discuss our tools. And we'll just first say that we organize our tools by categories. Now, there's a little bit of overlap here, and, and this isn't a perfect uh, naming convention, but I think you'll, you'll hopefully understand the general premise of why we've organized these tools the way we have and, and from an understanding of the different types of visitors. The whole idea is, is that different visitors need different things at different times. And if they don't find that right tool for them, you run the risk of them leaving. So we have four general categories and we'll go into more detail here in a moment. But the first one is early stage, um, or early stage website visitors. Then we have those that are evaluating their options. Those that are ready to contact you, but they want to do it by their, their preferred method. And then we, we call kind of the fourth category after hours, but that could really just be any time that someone is willing and wanting to make contact with you, but they're not able to do it based upon your availability. So the first thing we talk about is our early stage uh, visitors, right? Those that when you are trying to sell a product or a service or get someone to take action 
to, uh, you know, to, to uh, purchase something from you, you're always going to have those visitors that are early stage, right? They are just gathering information, maybe on behalf of someone else that actually makes the purchase decision. Maybe it's on behalf of their organization, but they're trying to just get an understanding of what are the different products and services uh, that are a potential solution to what they believe their problem might be. You can look at this so many different ways, and it's really hard because different industries, it's different things, right? When you're trying to find a painter, when you're trying to look for the new restaurant that you want to, um, you know, you want to go eat food at, the uh, church you want to join, uh, you know, it, it, there's so many different things. But when you're trying to learn more about that first, so the first category we have different tools for our knowledge base our video showcase and our link launcher. And now we'll go into a little more detail about those specific tools. So the first one is your knowledge base, right? This is where you present all of the information, the most common questions that your visitors might need to have their specific uh, you know, questions answered. Now you can uh, organize these questions by uh, categories, right, by sections. Um, so you can have different categories they can choose as a drop down. Then they also can search based upon the content of the questions. So maybe they don't know the category they want to look at, but they do know that, that what might actually pertain to that. So they can search for their questions as well. As it relates to the questions that you add, you're obviously going to have the question and then the answer. But one of the really powerful features of Birdseed with the knowledge base is, is that you can add media to the top. That might be a picture, a visual, uh, that might be a GIF, um, but most commonly what that will be is a video, and it'll be a video of someone answering that question. And what's nice about this is, is it really adds a personal touch as if you are actually communicating uh, human to human and answering that question for them in a way that you really may not have another you know, option in order to, to make that happen. So it can be incredibly valuable. One thing I'll say too before we move on here is, is that this can really take pressure off of and sometimes even replace live chat. So what you, what you may find is, is that when you have live chat, that people are asking some of the same questions. And so what's nice is, is that the moment that happens, you can then add that question and answer right to your knowledge base. So the next person that's looking for that won't need to actually start a live chat. They can do this. And, and kind of uh, get that information through self-service. Our next tool is what we call our video showcase, right? Video showcase is exactly what it says. You can have a series of videos all strung together. Now, you can do this in a number of different ways, and obviously depending on your organization, the way you use this uh, would really be specific to you, but this could just be a whole bunch of produced videos with whatever your common uh, you know, your most powerful videos are that you maybe have on YouTube currently or on Vimeo or some other third party that you want to make sure that your website visitors, the guests to your website uh, are able to see quickly and, and see, um, you know, in context, right? So they're all together and, and organized well. The other thing this could really be, uh, you know, depending on the nature of what you are offering, it can almost kind of simulate a live uh, demo of, let's say, a product that you're selling, right? So this might be a whole bunch of videos you string together, but let's say you sell shoes, right? This could be a whole bunch of short videos that someone could go through of people just demoing different shoes that you offer, different products that you offer. So it's almost like having, even though it's, um, you know, recorded, right, pre-recorded, almost like a real-time selling opportunity for uh, any product or maybe even a service. If it's people talking about the services, maybe even in a conversational, like two people on screen. So there's a lot of different ways you can present those videos, but they can be in a formal capacity or also in a very informal way if you want that. So that's our video showcase. The next tool is really, really basic, but also really, really important to have. And that is what we call our link launcher. Now, um, what this does is basically allows you to move your visitors either on the same page, right? It takes them to that, or it opens up an additional page. But the ability for them to get to information that you really want them to see 
but it keeps it in the context of that engagement panel. So let's say you have an offer, like there's a page on your website you've already created, right? And you want to make sure they see that. That's where you can list that there uh, in the engagement panel using our link launcher. Maybe there's some, some um, resources, some information off site that you want to link them to. So they have context for, you know, whatever the product or the organization, maybe it's an award that you won recently that's on a, a third party website. Um, you know, maybe it's just, you know, information about what you offer, um, you know, that, that's industry related, right? So many different ways, but this can either be on your website, a specific page uh, or link, or it can be off your website as well. One other thing we actually offer using Link Launcher is that if you do not want to use our built-in live chat, which we'll get to later, we actually can help you uh, trigger or allows you to trigger um, if you're already using another live chat product. And right now there are three products that we have built in. One is Intercom, two is Help Crunch, and the third one is actually a product called Live Chat. If you have it, you'll already know the name, so you don't have to worry about it. Those are three products. If you don't want to use our live chat, you're already using something, we can actually trigger those inside of our, our link launch inside of our engagement panel using Link Launcher. Okay, so let's say you have your visitors have the information, right? So someone that comes to your website, they feel informed, they feel like they have the right information they need to make a um, you know, a, a, a decision. And now they're just trying to figure out what option do they want to go with? That might be a competitor of yours. That might be to go a completely different direction, right? That might not be a direct competitor. That might be another way of solving their problem or, or you know, serving whatever need is they're looking for. Or it could just be doing nothing at all, right? So, you know, maybe they, they haven't found enough value in that as an option. Um, there's so many different ways of, of looking at this and so, so many different industries, but once someone has the information, you are now trying to present yourself as the best solution. And we've got three tools for that. One is our customer testimonials. The second one is our event announcement tool. The third one is our user feedback tool. So we'll first talk about our customer testimonials. And this one is pretty self-explanatory, right? We allow you to display text and or text and video testimonials. Now, uh, you know, there's a lot of different you know, things. These could obviously be from your most, you know, uh, powerful um, customers, your best customers. This could be to establish credibility that people can trust you. But this also could just be another way to help someone understand how they share in a similar problem. So, you know, one way of saying, oh, you know, we love your product or service. You can trust them because we did. But another one can be, here's how they helped me, right? If you're a law firm and someone has a specific type of case, understanding how that firm or your firm helped that person because their situation was similar. So it can just be a really uh, great way to help someone find uh, how they relate to other customers. One thing we'll say here is, is that this is an all-in-one solution, meaning that we actually provide you with your own custom link you don't need to have a third party tool, but we provide you with your own custom link that you can send to your customers to collect text and or video testimonials. And those will come directly into Birdseed. Once you've approved them, you can display them, but it's everything you need to collect those testimonials. Super, super powerful. Now you may already have these uh, in other locations, by the way. So if you want to kind of you know, pick some of your best, copy those and then give context to where they are, maybe even use a link so that somebody can link right to that uh, testimonial and find it somewhere else. Maybe it's on Google, maybe it's on, um, you know, depending on your industry, maybe it can be a specific, uh, industry specific type of listing, things along those lines. Um, so, you know, there's tons of ways that we can work even with your existing testimonials. Our next tool is what we call our event announcement tool. And this similar to the next one, it really comes down to how you want to use it. There's a ton of different ways that you're able to make use of this tool. Now we call it event announcements because two of the most common, you know, uh, situations are events that have taken place recently, meaning we are, you know, relaying news about your organization, things that have happened, uh, you know, recently, or it could be things that are coming up. Maybe it's trade shows that you're going to be attending. 
Uh, maybe it's going to be conferences you put on. Maybe it's going to be webinars that you host. Um, maybe it's just things that you have. Maybe you're receiving an award, um, you know, in the near future. Uh, there's just so many different ways that it can be event related, either of things that have happened recently or things that will be happening in the future. But you also can use it other ways, right? You might be able to present it. One common, uh, you know, way is let's say you have a uh, typical customer profile and you have a relationship with your customer that lasts, as an example, let's say a number of months. You can use our tool to uh, present a demo timeline or an example timeline of what a new customer experience could look like. So you could just present to your customers, here's, here's what it looks like. Month one, this would happen. Month three, this would happen. Month five, this would happen. So that's another way of using our tool. The whole goal, though, of a tool like this is for someone who comes to your website, for them to be able to get closer to you, to understand and, and feel more connected to your organization, right? Whether it's through recent news and, and understanding, oh, wow, these are some things that have happened to them. It also creates a relevance, right? It creates an authenticity to say, oh, this website and this business, this organization are up to date. For instance, if you have, you know, a, um, uh, an opening, right, of a new location that happened a month ago, it tells someone you are current. The website is current. Things are happening right now. So it can be really, really powerful. Our next tool is what we call our user feedback tool. And again, just like our event announcements tool, this can be used a ton of different ways. And you'll really have to get a little creative in thinking about how it could be uh, helpful to your organization. The two main uh, ways that we use this tool is either to collect information from your visitors, which can help you to better understand their experience on your website. Now, uh, that experience also could be not just in relation to that website visit, but it could be experience in relation to your industry, right? Um, you know, other people and, and, you know, the times that they've worked with, you know, people in your industry in the past. Uh, this also could be, you know, in relation to your your actual organization, how they feel about your organization or their experience uh, with you specifically. But that would be the first category, right? When you're collecting information. The second one would be when you're kind of uh, informing or educating your customers. So we have three different types of questions that you can ask using our user feedback tool. One would be our star rating. The second one is what we call our sentiment based, right? So you see the emojis there and you can customize what the text says in terms of how that represents for, you know, strongly, uh, you know, agree to strongly disagree. I really like it to, I really hate it, right? Uh, you know, however you want to customize that text to fit your question. But then the third one is multiple choice answers. Now you can allow someone to actually fill in their answer along with the multiple choices that you've presented, but um, this can be incredibly powerful to educate people, right? So uh, you can collect information and and disseminate, you know, uh, kind of a high level, you know, where a customer would find themselves. As example, we ask a question using our user feedback tool on our website that asks, um, what tools are you currently using on your website to engage visitors, right? So they, you know, a visitor can say, oh, I, I currently use live chat. And then afterwards, we'll display how other people answer that question. Now, not numbers, because if only five people have answered, we don't want someone to, to say that. But as a percentage of the whole, so they can see how they fit in with other people that have asked that, that question. Um, but this tool can be really powerful because when it comes to multiple choice or of course, with multiple choice, that means you also can have true false, right? Two answers. You are able to add media to the introduction of the question. And then you're also add, able to add media to the introduction of their response that they give. So again, let me give you an example. Let's say you asked that same question that we we're talking about. What, what engagement tools are you currently using on your website? We could have actually added a video that kind of describes the question we're asking, why we're asking it, and you know our, our beliefs around that question. Then if somebody answers live chat, 
we can already have a prepared answer video that kind of validates them, explains why live chat is wonderful. We really like that they answered it. But here's other some other reasons why they may want to consider using other tools as well. So as you can see, those questions can be really, really powerful to connect with people in a very frictionless way, right? They don't have to provide any of their, their own personal information, but it can be a great way of, of disseminating information based upon what people believe. Here's one more common example as we, we move on or before we move on. A question you can ask is around price points, right? For your product. Let's say you sell artificial trees, okay? If you sell an artificial tree that is $500, you could have three answers, right? Like, you know, $100 to $300, uh, 300 to 600 and then 600 to 1000 plus, right? As far as your three categories. Now, when someone answers, you know, uh, the, the high you know, level and then the low level, you can explain why that might make sense that they would be looking for that, but here's why they don't want to pay too little or too much. And then of course, when they choose your question, you can explain why you priced uh, the way you did and also, you know, kind of validate their answer because that's exactly the same price point they're looking for. So hopefully that helps you organize these questions where people can ask them in a series or answer them in a series. They can skip questions if they want to, basically they can engage with your super quick questions as long as they want to and as much as they want to. So our third category is when people are ready to communicate with you, right? They have all of their 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 questions answered, right? They're ready, you know, they they they're they've they're past the point of needing to make a decision. Now they they really are genuinely considering you and they're ready to get in touch with you. They want to move from anonymous to someone who's willing to provide some information. We have three tools uh, that you can uniquely do so. First one is our phone contact. The second one is our call request tool. The third one is live chat. So the first one is our phone contact. Now with this, uh, as you can see visually here, there's three categories. You can turn off categories as you see fit. But the first one at the top is the ability to add a phone number. Now you can add not just one phone number if you want. You can add a phone number for multiple locations. You can add it for multiple departments. You can choose whatever that might be. And on mobile, if they click that, it will actually allow them to then, uh, you know, dial that phone number directly, right? It pulls up their phone and makes it really simple for them to get in touch with you. Um, the next section is your address. So you can actually show them visually on a map where you're located. And that can be really, really helpful for people. Now, if you Let's say you're, you know, these days everyone's working from home. Let's say you don't actually have a physical location or you just simply don't want to give a, a actual specific physical location. You could actually set that map at something higher level and just give like as example, your city, right? So we're located in Orlando, Florida. We could just put Orlando. So you still have context of, hey, we're in Florida, we're in Orlando, but specifically you wouldn't know where we are located. The third section is your hours of operation. Again, really, really helpful for people, especially in the context of making a phone call to you to know, you know, when are you open? When are you closed? Now, a lot of times people set this as, um, you know, open or only showing when they're, you know, during their regular hours of, let's say you're set nine to five. So they would see this phone number. But the nice part is, is that if they are planning on calling back later or they choose to call back later, They'll also know that, hey, they're not going to see this after 5 p.m. because you'll be closed and you no longer show your phone number. So showing that hours of operation can be really, really helpful. The second one is what we call our call request tool. Now, the way this works is it is a real-time uh, conversation similar to live chat, as we'll get to in a moment, but very, very basic, right? So the way this works is that someone enters information on your website. Presumably, it would just be a phone number, right? You can keep it as simple as possible, obviously, with the goal of maximizing your conversions of people that would say, here's my phone number, please call me right now. Now, to be clear, this is also used, you know, when, when you say, well, if you could offer your phone number, why would somebody want to use this instead? Well, a lot of people, they don't want to have to go through the hassle 
of having, you know, to worry about getting, you know, through to the right person, the time it takes to get, you know, to the right person. They know that in a sales and marketing capacity, that if they enter their phone number, that hopefully within a very short period of time, their phone will ring. Now, getting back to this, the way this works is that they can just enter a phone number, right? And that request will come through similar to a live chat. And what's nice is, is that if you have multiple people on your team that can take those requests, they can decide if they're available or not. We do not call automatically anyone's phone, right? The reason why we did that in order to keep the phone portion of it separate is that most businesses already have phone service. There's no reason to pay for another phone service. You can already track this because we are providing the information. We're going to save the information that's entered here for you. But the other thing is, is that oftentimes with the phone numbers, the phone services that actually auto dial both parties is that it can be kind of uncomfortable for everyone, right? You as the salesperson get caught off guard. You're in the middle of something. You get caught off guard, you know, by a phone number that's just calling in. It can be very disruptive. Also, for the person requesting the phone call, it can be a little awkward because they don't know who they're, they're going to be talking to. So you will actually use your own for, phone service and actually dial the person uh, directly yourself. But when that call request comes in, let's say there's multiple people that can take it, whoever's actually available decides that they're going to be the one to take that phone call. You click almost like a live chat. You click accept, right? And now what's nice is, is that if you have your profile picture saved, it will actually display now for the visitor that here is the person It transitions over. Here is the person that will be calling them. So it makes it a little bit more personal, a little less off-putting when they see, oh, Mike, as an example, will be calling me here in just a moment. And Mike has accepted the phone call and knows that they are you know, ready to call me. Right? They've acknowledged that they are ready to call me. Uh, two more things I'll mention about this is that, one, if you want to add in a little more information, maybe a first name, maybe kind of a, you know, why are you looking for this phone call? That might be able to help whatever qualifying questions you might want to add in there that the person can provide the information to so that if you have multiple people that can take that call, they can decide who might be the best person to take that phone call. Hope that makes sense. The final piece I'll mention here is, is that this also works through our uh, mobile app. And so what's nice is, is that uh, when this comes through in our mobile app, if you click accept, almost like the contact, you know, for your phone contact, it will then also, um, you know, pull up that phone number automatically so you can dial that number. Now, it doesn't, you know, auto dial or anything like that, but it just, it makes it a little easier for you to be able to make that phone call. So it's a really, really powerful tool and allows someone to make, to get uh, instant call requests right from your website. The final tool for real-time communication is obviously live chat. I mentioned it a number of times. It's built right into uh, Birdseed. We keep the product itself rather simple, right? Someone can take a, a phone call. Uh, they can see the profile picture of the person they're chatting with. Uh, the one thing that separates our live chat from anything else you'll see on this planet is what we call our instant video responses. That is something we patented about two and a half years ago. And I won't spend a ton of time here on the rationale behind it. Um, but simply put, we recognize that video and real-time video connections are very, very powerful. But when it comes to website visitors, people that you don't know, it can be really difficult to jump into a live streaming video chat. And, and frankly, it's, it's potentially problematic even for you as the operator, as much as you'd probably love to make the sale, if the person is a fit for whatever you're offering, it can be very disruptive to what you're also doing. So with instant video responses, anytime you're in your, your normal live chat conversation, you're able to press a button, record a video, and push it right to your visitor for them to watch real time. Great way for them to meet you, but in a way that's very frictionless and comfortable. So that is our live chat. And uh, that completes kind of our, our real time um, tools. So the last category of visitors that we think about, and we offer tools for are those that are either trying to reach you after hours, right when you're when no one is available to actually take a call or a live chat real time, or Let's say it's during regular business hours, but frankly, your team is small and you're just busy doing other things. 
Maybe someone wants to request a live chat, but they can't get through. And then the final scenario would be someone comes to your website, could be outside of business hours, could be inside of business hours, but they themselves, frankly, want to take action, but right now they're actually busy, right? So maybe they're right now just even too busy to live chat with you, but they want to ask you a question and have you get back to them later on. So those are all the scenarios. And if we think about how prevalent that is, it's actually very, very prevalent. So there, if your business is open from, let's say, 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, that's 40 hours a week, right? Those 40 hours in the overall scheme of the overall time frame, the, the overall available hours is less than uh, uh, 20% of the time, right? Over, excuse me, over 75% of the time, someone is not available. But your website is still open and ready to receive website visitors. So these tools can be very, very important because they allow you to essentially keep your business, your, your website open for business at all times. So we have our email capture, our contact form, and our scheduled meeting tool. The first one is our email capture, right? I almost don't like using the, the wording of email capture, but that's probably the most common way it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's referred to. And basically what we are doing is we are trading an email address and maybe some other collected pertinent information, but the core being an email address for some sort of value that they are going to receive. Whether it's a digital brochure, they can receive instant coupons, they can get a price quote, they can sign up for a newsletter, whatever it might be, but they are exchanging their email address and their basic information for whatever you're willing to give them. This is perfect for the person who says, I'm interested enough to give you some information, but I'm not necessarily ready to buy. And this is a really crucial step that we want to be able to capitalize on because a, a lot of people find themselves in this. If you think about a lot of the things that you might buy, whether it be a product or service or, you know, join an you know, event or a club uh, or attend, you know, some sort of event, you know, this can be very common that that you're ready to uh, connect, but you're not ready to make the final decision of purchasing. One of the things that we can do is not just offer you know form fields for them to flood information, and and you can obviously add text to the top to describe whatever it is that you're offering. But the the other thing you're able to do is add in media, and more specifically, you're able to add a recorded video explaining whatever it is that you are offering to them. Super, super powerful in order to connect on a human level and, and you know provide that offer to that visitor. The next thing is our contact form. And you know again, uh, very similar to kind of the email capture, except for in this case, instead of exchanging information um, you know, for an email address, right? Or for something of value rather, you are providing your information with the hope that they will get back in touch with you. Whatever that request or whatever that question is that they have, they're able to ask that and expect an answer later on. Now, again, similar to the email capture and a number of other tools, you can add a video introduction to this. So here's the example I would give. Let's say you go to a website today. There's a contact form. It's very basic. It's very flat. You provide some information and they hope that you provide information. Right. Let's say you're looking for something today. Imagine if you could have a video introducing that contact form that says from the person who is going to be receiving that contact form, they set the expectation of when you're going to get a response. They let them know how valuable and how important it is that you're sending it, how much they appreciate that. But overall, what they are basically doing is letting you know that your information is not going into the void, never to be responded to. That little connection, that little offering that you're giving to them may increase your conversion ratio. Now, not saying it's necessarily drastic, but if you were to even have another 5% of people contact you, that can be incredibly powerful for your bottom line. The final tool we offer is our scheduled meeting tool. This allows someone to uh, basically take the, the, uh, the, the need off their plate for setting a very specific time in the future 
to have a call or in-person meeting with you. Uh, what they're able to do is look at their schedule and figure out based upon their availability, what would work for them, as well as understanding for you as the operator, you're able to uh, sync with your Google Calendar and take off the days and times that don't work or other slots that are already blocked off by or blocked out by other things that you have busy or t time slots that have been taken because you're busy. So for instance, as a starting point, maybe your availability is only you know, nine to five Monday through Friday, but because we're syncing with your Google Calendar, you can also knock out you know, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. and 11 to 11.30. So we'll only show available time slots. Again, the goal here is, and the value is that that person who's on your website, they can basically set it and forget it, right? They can say, oh, I wasn't able to get in touch with them right now, but Tuesday at 10 a.m., I now have a scheduled call. So that completes all of our tools, and hopefully that gives you a really good indication of the different value that you can find from different tools. We'd love to have a conversation with you about ideas and ways that you can get more out of uh, the tools that you think would be valuable for your different website visitors to, in order to increase conversion ratios. But as a starting point, getting started is very, very easy, right? You can have Birdseed live on your website 15 minutes from now. Four really, really uh, quick steps. The first one is just create your account. That takes just about 90 seconds. You'll then go in and choose whichever tools you want as a starting point. Some we already even actually have set up for you because they're kind of ready to go out of the box. So you'll just customize your text and, and go. Some of the others, like as, as for instance, you know, as example, our knowledge base, you'll need to add questions to obviously set that up and make it live. But then the third thing is you'll customize your panel. We talked about this earlier. This could just be as simple as adding a logo, choosing a color, maybe grouping, you know, one of the two tools, uh, you know, but it, it's very, very quick, very, very easy. And then once you've customized your panel, all you'll have to do is add one line of code to your website. If it's WordPress, we have a WordPress plugin. Uh, if it's one of the other website builders, we have a ton of videos to explain how to do it, but it's super simple. And what's nice is, let's say you have five or seven tools that we've now added to your website. You're not having to go to different vendors, set up accounts, pay each one of them, and add separate lines of code. You're able to do all of that uh, right here through Birdseed. And once it's live, it's live. So you can make customizations without having to go in and modify that code. So what I'll leave you with this is, is these three questions. Is your website important to your sales process? If it's not, then you don't need to move on to the next question, right? If you don't use your website, if you don't think that people come to your website and need that, as, as a really important step in potentially purchasing a product or service from you. Uh, but if it is, do you know, the second question is, is do you know the mindset and the needs of your different website visitors? Have you ever thought through that? Have you thought about what they're looking for when they visit? If you put yourself in the shoes, so to speak, of those website visitors, the third question would be, do you have the ways to meet the needs for each of those visitors? So we encourage you that if you don't have those, <laughs> that you uh, sign up for Birdseed. It's very, very simple. You can get started on one of our free plans. And uh, we really look forward to uh, talking with you again in the future. Thanks for your time today.